In May of 2020, Jack Dorsey of Twitter made what could prove to be his most disruptive move yet. He announced that as a result of their experience working remotely during the pandemic, some Twitter employees could continue to do so for as long as they want. Several employers followed suit, inspiring all kinds of think pieces on the demise of the office or the coming commercial real estate apocalypse. But the numbers are compelling. A recent Harris poll revealed that 65% of people currently working remotely feel more productive. 77% say they are finding new times to be productive outside of business hours. And 80% say they can better manage interruptions from coworkers working from home than they can from the office. So... Processes are evolving, protocols are developing, Zoom is Zooming, and it seems like we're on our way to figuring out how to make this whole work-from-home thing work. But according to our guest on this episode, there's a crucial aspect of remote work that we're overlooking, and that's leadership. What happens when Michael Scott no longer has a Dunder Mifflin to drive into every morning? According to Dr. Vince Molinaro, virtual leadership comes with all kinds of nuances and tests that leaders need to prepare themselves for today if they're to succeed. And he should know, since he's devoted his career to helping leaders be better leaders. Vince is the author of the New York Times bestselling book, The Leadership Contract, and he joins me today at The Nexus. The Nexus a place where people converge and connect. On this podcast, we look at the things that are changing the way all of us do our jobs. And we're going to take a quick peek into the minds of those people who are helping us change with them. Scientists, HR leaders, and experts in human performance. I'm Chris Nelson. Vince, welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited about the chat. In preparing for this interview, you and I had a chance to speak beforehand. And I asked you what leaders weren't thinking about during the pandemic and what and weren't thinking about that they needed to. And your answer sort of surprised me. I don't want to ruin the surprise for everyone else. Perhaps you could tell me what you said. I did a little poll on LinkedIn to identify what are the primary challenges you're facing right now. And the top two that came up were leading in a period of uncertainty and ambiguity, which is understandable, Two, having to make really tough business decisions. I had put leading your virtual team and remote workers as one of the options, and that got a very, very low response rate, which was a bit surprising. So as I've talked to leaders who are part of my ongoing community that I talk to on a regular basis, what they've been finding is a lot of leaders either are assuming they've got it under control and underestimating what's really required, or it's not even something they're even thinking about because it's so foreign for how they've been typically leading. How equipped are they to do it, just based on your informal surveys across the leadership universe? I would say that on the whole, we're probably not well equipped to lead in this new way. We kind of come into COVID with understanding that issues of employee engagement weren't great before COVID, and we really weren't going in as strong as we could be. Let's take a moment here and let's say, you know, all the things, all the concepts, the ideas that you sort of talk about in the leadership contract, let's accept those as sort of table stakes for any leader to do their job effectively. I'd love to get at the nuances of virtual leadership. What are the things, what are the behaviors, the actions that a leader needs to take in that new environment that they probably didn't need to do when they were interacting physically with their direct reports? In many ways, what it means to be a leader doesn't necessarily change. You're still there to drive performance. You're still there to kind of create a sense of engagement, to align people to a vision, all those things you know, really don't change. What I think happens is certain things become even more critical to kind of get right. So number one is really setting high standards of performance in an environment, whether it's an office or other type of workplace where everyone congregated together. It was easier for a leader to bring a team together if they needed to, or to rely on random points of connection with their employees to have conversations. In a virtual world, you may feel more reluctant to challenge a poor performer to address an issue that needs to be confronted because you feel that it'd be so much easier to do this face-to-face. -face. Well, the reality was most leaders weren't doing it where they could do it face-to-face, -face, and now it's just become a bit more complex. So it means leaders have to be far more deliberate in reaching out, connecting, and communicating with their teams and with individuals on a regular basis. 
The second behavior that becomes critical is being very good at kind of communicating context and clarity around the strategy. It's something that leaders weren't particularly great at, certainly pre-COVID, but now it becomes even more important because I think any kind of change, and certainly the dramatic change we're facing, really unsettles people. And so you really need to just kind of reinforce what's important, what is a strategy, what are the imperatives, and how do people's work contribute to driving that success? The other behavior that we hear about and that the research reveals is that leaders are very good at bringing a sense of optimism about the company and its future. And I think that's really, really critical right now. There's a quote that I came across a while back that says it's pivotal for leaders that in a crisis, don't become the crisis, right? You, you need to inspire hope and faith for people. And then the last piece that really becomes uh, critical is you've just got to be doing a much more deliberate job of connecting with people to see how they're doing emotionally at this moment in time. Our employees are leading more complicated lives. They're not commuting and whatnot, but certainly managing things on the home front becomes more challenging. I was on a, a webinar where one CEO talked about how through this stay at home orders, they didn't realize how many of their employees actually lived alone. And so it became paramount for him to ensure that managers were reaching out to their employees because it's one thing to be working at home when you've got a, you know, a family. It's another thing to be there completely by yourself, completely disconnected, completely isolated. And so that's something you've got to pay more attention to. Whereas before the proximity of people to each other meant there are certain things you didn't have to be as attentive about. Now you have to be attentive about them all the time. Yeah. And one of the things I learned because I led global virtual teams, you could be on a call at 6 a.m. and then you're on a stream of back-to-back -back calls and all of a sudden it's 6 p.m. But what I found was that as the day progressed, I had to start allowing extra time in meetings because if you don't do it, they're going to be distracted and you won't get what you got to get to anyway. In an environment like this, leaders almost have to equip the people working for them to almost kind of lead themselves. How do leaders sort of resolve that within themselves and sort of telegraph the idea that they're trusting these people to get this work done? It's such a great point you raised. There was a great quote years back, Ricardo Semlar, who's a Brazilian business leader who, who wrote a book. And in it, he kind of observed how what organizations did was hired adults, brought them into companies and treated them like children. <laughs> and I think that's something that, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves is how have I led my teams before and what can I do now, even virtually, if trust isn't where it needs to be? How do I demonstrate that trust and that confidence in people? Trust is pivotal. And, and I would say that if pre-COVID, you were a micromanager, someone who didn't trust employees, you're going to have a hard time now because you really don't see people in action. It's all got to be about results and what people are producing. And so you've got to trust that in this world now, your employees and your team members are going to be adults. What is the value of leaders being mindful to set boundaries with or encourage their workers to set boundaries around the work they're doing? That's where leaders have to pause and be really deliberate about how they're showing up and how they want to show up, because that's exactly right. There's a lot of bleeding going on between, you know, personal life, professional life, between what, what constitutes a, a typical workday. An office would tend to guide those things because, you know, the office doors didn't open until late. You couldn't get in at a certain time and normally you left at a certain time. So I think leaders need to be mindful of what are the expectations you have of your team and your employees. Be mindful of what hours of the day you're sending emails. You know, there's a number of those things we've got to be more mindful and deliberate of because we could find ourselves in this trap where we feel like we're working 24 hours and that ultimately long-term erodes any productivity gains we may realize by having people work remotely. Are there any shortcuts for leaders? Any quick fixes? Things that they can implement or try today that would accelerate their learning or their expertise or their ability to do that well? For me, it's always about this, I call it this ESL framework. What's the environment and context? What are we trying to achieve? What's our strategy? That's what the S stands for. And how do we need to behave as leaders? And, and what do we expect from our employees? And that becomes a bit of a mental device, right? Where you're, you're constantly kind of getting a sense of, okay, 
what's the context, either what's happening out there in our industry, what's happening within the organization. People want to understand that and know that. So you need to kind of do your job to get as equipped on knowing where things are at regarding that. Then it's, so what's our strategy to be successful, to win in our market, to drive long-term results? And then finally, it's what do I expect of you? What do we need to do as a team to rally around each other to drive success? What is our response to the situation we find ourselves in? Let's remind them of what's critical from our strategy and what we have to deliver and just reinforce your, your standards and expectations. And that can be a framework for an informal conversation, for a formal conversation. But I think that's a really a simple way in how leaders can kind of embed that practice on a regular basis. Vince, I want to thank you for making time to chat with me. Thanks so much, Chris. Really appreciated the conversation. If you want to read more of Vince's thoughts on leadership, I encourage you to read his book, The Leadership Contract, or visit his website at theleadershipcontract.com, where you can find all kinds of great resources, including his new online leadership course. And if you think you need to prepare the leaders at your company for a future in virtual leadership, then let the people at Nexus Communications help. Not only do they produce this amazing podcast, they've been helping companies prepare leaders for more than 20 years with industry-leading strategies, programs, and products. You can find us at nexuscommunications.com. That's N-E-X-U-S communications.com. And please be sure to like us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you happen to find us. I'm Chris Nelson. Thanks for listening.